The pandemic has wreaked havoc on international sporting events, with many cancelled or taking place with no spectators. Losses from ticket sales, sponsorship deals and broadcasting rights have been enormous. But the World Surf League is determined not to let COVID-19 curtail its championship tour, negotiating with Australian authorities to host competitions around the country in line with safety restrictions. Jade Barker has more on why organisers were so determined to overcome the logistical challenges. In the world of pro surfing, things don't always go to plan. Sometimes you have to wait for conditions to be just right. Hi everyone, morning, so we are for the day. and some waves, but it's um, three condition. But the World Surf League is determined not to let the pandemic wipe out this year's championship tour and with it, millions of dollars from broadcasting rights and sponsorship deals. We have to be able to deliver outcomes for our sponsors and investors. Um, so, you know, it became critically important to deliver events and that's why we looked at Australia as a place that, OK, well, if we can get the athletes in, we know we can deliver safe events in a safe environment. Uh, we know the governments are fully supportive of delivering these events and helping us to achieve that. Still, getting the world's surf superstars here was no easy feat. More than 100 international athletes and support staff had to spend two weeks in hotel quarantine on arrival in the country. Other contingency plans were also put in place, including travel bubbles and police security, to ensure everyone involved in the tour could take part in events around the country, even if interstate lockdowns were enacted. For the surfers, who can earn hundreds of thousands of dollars in prize money a year on top of sponsorship deals, it was a small price to pay to be able to compete again. I mean, this is my livelihood. This is how I make my money. This is what I train for at home. And to be able to come back and have a successful tour run is insane. But it's not just the surf industry that benefits from the competitions going ahead. The Margaret River Pro is a proven visitor draw card for the area. It was cancelled last year, but in 2019 it attracted around 35,000 spectators and injected around $6 million into the local economy. Western Australia, where the Margaret River Pro is located, is currently not mandating mask wearing. But some restrictions remain, such as social distancing, which means reduced crowd capacity. A second YSL event will take place on Rottnest Island, off the coast of the state capital, Perth, but without any spectators. Organisers say even with fewer people attending, there's still some benefits. I think it's 126 countries this event is broadcast live into. So having those people around the world, that trickle-on tourism appeal of the waves that we're surfing here for the event or the, the vineyards that pop up on the broadcast will hopefully stimulate people to think that this is a great place to come for a holiday. And that's our hope with Rottnest as well. The league has several events scheduled in the US, Mexico and Tahiti later this year. And while organisers say the rest of the tour will be challenging, they're hopeful the Australian model proves there are ways international sporting events can successfully ride the COVID-19 wave. Jade Barker, TRT World, Margaret River, Australia.